and welcome to uh, this week's Week on Webcast. Uh, I'm Jonathan, M0JSX, here in the Martin Lynch & Sun showroom uh, for another Saturday. It's uh, nice to have you with us. Um, perhaps someone in the fullness of time could give me an audio report. That would be very much appreciated. Um, what I'm going to do uh, this week is we've got a whole heap of used uh, items that uh, we're going to have a quick look over. And of course, everything is also on our used website, hamradio.co.uk slash used. Um, also, um, we put together a, a few bits and pieces on uh, the desk, which we're going to go through first. Um, we have um, had an idea about what uh, we could do in terms of uh, a new sort of antenna, um, in terms of what could we put together, what sort of items go together uh, that you could easily take with you, maybe as a portable solution, or even at home um, if, you've, if you've got the space to do so. And uh, it's all centered uh, around uh, the new 12 meter DX commander pole, which I have to say is quite heavy. Uh, but of course this lives up to Callum's uh, superb build quality and standards um, and really thick or much um, thicker walls to each of the um, sections than from other uh, 12 meter poles. So it's a really, really thick construction, even to the top section, it's, it's very thick. Um, but you could easily use one of these poles, maybe not the first section or the first couple of sections, to support the center of a, a dipole. So we've got um, the 12 meter DX commander pole, uh, as well as, I can't get over how, just how heavy that is. That's, a, that's not going anywhere very quickly. Um, with, the, um, with the dipole senders that we have uh, available from stock, um, both with uh, an SO239 on, uh, or if you prefer uh, open wire feeder. So if you wanted to run a doublet, you, you could easily do so. Of course, we still have the, uh, the dipole flex in stock. We either sell this uh, in 50 or 200 meter lengths. This is a drum of 200 meters. So if you wanted to, you could uh, buy the whole length um, and you know, make up loads of antennas with it. So that's 200 meters on that, so, oh, sorry, also sold as a 50 meter length. Um, so you can make up, um, for a 50 meter length, you could easily make up a full size dipole for, uh, for 80 meters and have 10 meters left over. Uh, dog bone at either end, as I say, we've got the, uh, the bungees uh, still in stock that we did on a video uh, a little while ago. Um, if you wanted to um, hold the pole in a static position, of course you could also use one of the smaller DX commander poles, maybe the 10 or the seven meter one, um, or indeed one of the, the alu masks from, from the antenna would also work very well. Uh, and if you wanted to guy it, we also have in stock the uh, guy rings from uh, DX Engineering. These are really nice. They'd easily slide over the uh, DX commander pole um, and give you lots of guying options, as well as um, a place where you could run a wire down the outside. Uh, and then just to finish off the, the whole assembly, we have uh, Mastrant uh, rope, uh, the synthetic guy ropes, and we also have the, uh, also in stock, uh, the Dyneema rope, the, the really thin stuff with an uh, incredibly strong breaking strain, uh, which uh, is also available. And finally, to, to finish up uh, what's on the table, we'll have our, our cleaning kit. If you've seen our reused radios, of course we clean every single one before we offer it for sale. Uh, and this is the stuff we use. We use uh, the foam cleanser and a microfiber cloth uh, in order to get the radios looking as clean as they possibly can. So I still can't quite get over the weight of that uh, DX Commander. Um, just say a few uh, hellos, good afternoon to Trevor. Uh, hi Trevor, hope you're doing all right. Uh, to John as well, uh, 20F, uh, sorry, 20JFQ. Uh, to Alan, MM7DXC, and also to Ian as well, uh, MM6FP1. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, what we're gonna do now is say we're gonna put a few bits on the table today. Uh, we're going to have a look around uh, the used items. I say we've got quite a bit of happening in uh, used at the moment, so uh, we're going to have a quick look, or, or a not so quick look, as it probably end up being uh, around our, our used section. So let's um, let's start with the Flex 6600M, uh, as you would have seen in the video that we did uh, yesterday. We did a little bit of a Flex special. Uh, 6600M was there, and this is. Uh, a used example. So obviously it is the, the higher end with the eight slice receivers um, version of, of the flex radio. This particular one obviously has the front panel uh, so you can easily use it away from a computer if you want to. So this one 4499. Obviously Box has the internal ATU as standard with these. Really nice radio. If you want high end flagship performance um, at um, 
at a used price, and you save yourself a, a fair chunk of money over what you pay brand new for one of these, uh, then of course. And of course, it is coming with the very latest firmware as well. So it's coming with the version three software. Uh, so no compromise in terms of that. Uh, also in stock, the SGC SG231. Uh, this is uh, the um, long wire tuner from uh, SGC. From uh, going, going in uh, between one and 60 megs, not even 1.8 goes down to one meg. That's uh, impressive. We'll, uh, we'll handle, that's what it sees there, says we'll handle, uh, there you go, 100 watts, 100 watts power max, three watts of minimum in order to get a tune. Um, and it's a, it does all of those. So you can use it as a whiff antenna, uh, as uh, a backstay antenna, dipole, dipole feed line, uh, a loop if you wanted to. The list goes on. It's also got the controller as well. So you can do it auto sensing, but this one also has the uh, the controller too. Uh, that one at 349, as you can see, is boxed as well. Uh, a TS480 sat just sat here. Of course, uh, Kenwood's HF and six meter uh, mobile uh, radio. I know a lot of people who do run these um, uh, mobile in the car. Uh, with maybe a Diamond SD330 or uh, maybe a little Tar Heel. A really, uh, really good solution. Nice thing with the 480 is you do really get base station performance out of it. Um, and of course, you can use it as base station as well. Two antenna inputs, um, no inter, oh, sorry, it is an internal ATU because being an SAT, obviously with the HX, there's no internal ATU. So there is an internal ATU on these as well. And of course, that head uh, panel unit is um, just gorgeous. It's a nice size, it's not, um, not too big. It, uh, I'm sure if you're going mobile, if you want to put HF in the car, you'd find space for that. Or even if not, even if you wanted to use it in the shack, you know, the nice thing with the, the 480, of course, is you could hide the main body of the radio away somewhere, just run a speaker up as well as the head unit, and, uh, and you'd be good to go. No need to, to sort of find all the space for the entire radio on the, um, uh, on the desk. Uh, ICOM IC7610, also in stock at the moment, 2499. Of course, I've been banging on about ICOM for ages. In fact, Tony did a video on, on ICOM not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, IC7610. Uh, this is, of course, HF and six meters with that large, gorgeous color screen. 100 watts out the back. Uh, dual receive. Uh, what else can I say? Fully SDR, 2499 with the box and everything there. Don't see many, uh, very many of these anymore. It's the ICR1500. Uh, this is, of course, their uh, communication receiver. Uh, with that uh, really small, uh, compact head unit, uh, yours for just 375 fully boxed. Staying with ICOM, uh, IC7000 uh, for 699. Uh, this one, uh, of course, like a nice little colour screen. Um, and uh, uh, you can remote head them if you can find the, the separation cable, because they are coming a little bit more like hen's teeth now. But if you can find yourself a separation cable, if you want to run it mobile, just have the, uh, the head unit up the front. Of course, HF, EHF, USHF, 100 watts out on HF and six meters are a really good uh, buy if you're after uh, a compact mobile. Um, and um, of course, it's very much ICOM's answer to the 857 from Yeezy. Mentioning Yeezy, we've got a FT450D. Uh, this is um, uh, HF and six meters with built in ATU, 100 watts out. Uh, I suppose Yeezy would, would argue that this is kind of their. I suppose entry level in a way, but certainly not in terms of performance. I mean, we, we've always told the story about Tango 32 Charlie, and you can look it up online if you'd like. Uh, but to summarize, when the, uh, the shipment of DX5000s and quadra amplifiers went missing, um, all of the, the members of the, uh, um, uh, the contest group, five-star contest group, wasn't it? Uh, it took uh, 450s with them in their bags and did a quarter of a million QSOs just running 100 watts um, out the back of FT450Ds. And they are a fantastic uh, radio. I'd used one myself, I used to have one uh, before I bought my 7300. Still in the family, my dad's got mine now. 599 for an FT450D. Uh, in fact, we've got a couple of them at the moment, another one just sat there. A couple of speakers, come with SP23, good if you've got a TS2000 or a 590 or a 570 and what a matching speaker, a really good uh, option. A couple of um, smaller uh, marks down the back, but uh, from the front, it's uh, absolutely immaculate. And also an ICOM SP21, uh, good to match something like a, an IC7600. I suppose it would also match a 7610 as well, but of course there is the, the dedicated SP41 matching speaker for uh, the 7610. Uh, 99 pounds gets you that. And uh, also in stock, FTDX10 uh, from Yezu. This is a used example, 1299. 
uh, again boxed and uh, customer didn't have it so long it's still got that bit of uh, film over the sort of sub screen just up there uh, MFJ 939K, so it's uh, the, the Kenwood version of the 939. Uh, if you want to choose it with another manufacturer's radios, you can do so. There's a couple of jumpers to change inside the unit, um, as well as buying the appropriate cable. Um, but if you've got a Kenwood radio, got a, maybe a, a 480 or a 570 or a 590, and you want to add a, a tuner, an external tuner, uh, 939 is a good tuner, as used by um, uh, our very own Richard. Um, in store he uses uh, the the mfj tuners and uh, ah4 from icon if you've got a long wire tuner and icon radio then why not go for an ah4 250 pounds gets you this one it is boxed and it does of course come with the uh, coax and control cable as well uh, let's move up uh, ts590 sg um, it's uh, 999 pounds uh, this particular one we've got uh, a couple of these in stock at the moment uh, 999 gets you this one it is a good price now under a thousand pounds for a used 590 i didn't ever think i'd see the day not for an sg model anyway so it is the improved dsp it's got the cwd code uh, which is an impressive cwd code on these and um, as used by our training academy here at, uh, at the store uh, when we used to do the, the training pre-pandemic uh, we'd always use 590 sg as the uh, the radio to use on the foundation course a lovely radio easy to use easy to operate uh, that's uh, extremely good. Uh, another Ray H4, similar price, 249. Um, linear power, uh, sorry, switch mode power supply, 60 pounds there. 994 from MFJ, another uh, auto tuner. Add yourself the correct cable for your radio and it will work. 600 watts on SSB, 300 watts on CW, it'll handle. Um, good for about 10 to 1 mismatch. Another 590SG there. Uh, FTDX 3000, the baby 5000. Uh, of course, USB port on the back of these, one of the first radios to really sort of embrace that uh, methodology. So you can uh, run things like uh, PSK31 or FT8 or RITI or someone named a digital mode I haven't thought of. I haven't said Hellschreiber for a little while. There you go. You could run Hellschreiber one of these with, uh, with just that USB port on the back and the appropriate software on your computer. Uh, 1099 fully boxed for that. Uh, got an MFJ 994. B, as well as uh, an MFJ 1020C, the little active antenna. If you, uh, you're more into shortwave listening and want a small uh, um, active antenna to pop on your uh, on your desk, then uh, the MFJ 1020C could be the one for you. Uh, another 7610 just sat there. Now here we have an FT991 that's been upgraded to the 991A spec. So we had one in last week, that one's on. We've got another one that's come in. Uh, so it is, uh, it is inside, it is a 991A, and it is that by, by no other standard. It is a 991A, but it just says FT991 on the front because it's had the upgrade. Remember when they launched the 991A, uh, Yezu offered the upgrade path. So if you were the existing 991 owner, you could pay to have your radio upgraded to the latest specification. A few did, and this is one of them that did. £999 gets you the FT991 that has been upgraded to an FT991A. I can't stress enough, if you're looking and you're after an FT991A, don't pass up on this one because it is an FT991A. There's no other way about it. And even the, the serial number sticker underneath says FT991A. Um, what else can I mention? ICR8600. This, of course, is uh, ICOM's wideband communications receiver. 1999 gets you that. Uh, another SGC tuner, the 239. Uh, good if you're going to put it in an external box. If you're building it into a sort of a larger project and want uh, uh, an easy to operate uh, tuner, then this uh, is a fantastic option. Again, we'll handle uh, 200 watts in on um, PEP or CW. Uh, minimum input power, uh, one and a half watts in order to get it to tune. Uh, so that's um, good for pretty much any antenna type you'd like. And of course, it's, uh, it uh, comes with a full manual that you're probably gonna want the manual in order to, to get it working properly, uh, but they are they are pretty simple to get going. MF, uh, sorry, MFJ, BHI, sorry, Graham, BHI, dual in line. Uh, improve your, um, your receive audio um, with the BHI filters and in the DSP that um, BHI do. I saw, uh, uh, I saw someone the other day uh, install one of the BHI filters inside an IC705. I'm not sure I would be brave enough to do that um, to mine, but uh, someone did. Uh, but this will give you the same sort of performance, but uh, for the output of your radio through this uh, into a speaker and have improved DSP audio. Uh, 129 pounds gets you that, of course, it is boxed as well. Uh, IT100 from LDG. Uh, this is, uh, of course, um, 
good for any icon radio, basically produced in the last 30 years or so. Uh, anything from, oh, let's have a thing, IC735, this would work with, even back as far as that. Um, I had an IC726 at one point, that would work with that as well. 119 pounds, comes with the interface cable, draws its power from the radio. AT7000, dedicated for the, the uh, IC7000, but again, will work with pretty much any icon radio as well. About 125. Uh, MFJ Little Travel Tuner, this is the 902. These are absolutely perfect. If you want to go out portable um, uh, with uh, sort of a QRP radio, I mean, they will handle 150 watts, but if you want to sign really small and uh, you just want to sort of chuck it in your bag and, and use it, then, uh, then it's a great option for that. Uh, another 450D just sat there. MFJ 259B, the uh, HF VHF antenna analyzer. Uh, with that nice clear screen. If you've never used an MFJ antenna analyzer, um, then you're kind of missing out. If you have used one, maybe your club owns one, um, and you want to get one yourself, then this might be the option. I know these have been around forever. They are easy to use. Um, I, I've used one many times for checking my own antennas at home. They just work. Palstar DL2K at 349. This is um, uh, their two and a half uh, kilowatt dummy load with the RF meter on the front as well. Um, three, four, nine. If you're going to start playing with high power and you really want to sort of test out um, your amplifiers or, or whatever it is, um, then that's a good uh, good option for you. Uh, I'm seeing a few messages come up. I, I will come back to, to messages in, in a few minutes time. Uh, LDG Z11 Pro, uh, £125 for that one, uh, and uh, is being supplied with the IC Pack 6. So if you, again, if you've got an icon radio, uh, that'll work absolutely perfectly with that. Um, another 7,000 just sat there. Global AT2000, uh, if you're uh, an SWL, um, or if um, uh, if you just want a receive-only antenna tuner, Global AT2000, always very popular. These never last for long. Um, good for just matching your, your uh, pretty much any tuner, long wire or, or coax fed tuner, uh, antenna, sorry, to your uh, receiver. Um, that's a, a very good option. Uh, 99 pounds gets you that. Got another SP21 just out there. Kenwood uh, TM281. Uh, this is the uh, 50 watt mobile for VHF from Kenwood. Been out a few years now. 99 pounds. It's just one something simple. What could you go wrong with that? Uh, Kenwood LF30A, the uh, the 30 megs low pass filter. 40 quid for that one. Uh, an Elad Duo Red. I've got a customer after that already, I believe. Uh, Watson W20AM. Uh, the uh, linear power supply. Nice thing about these is there is no fan on these. So if you're um, if you're someone who wants um, a truly silent power supply, uh, Watson W20AM uh, in stock at the moment in our use section is good for you. It's got a massive heatsink on the back, 25 amp uh, peak on the um, uh, on the current draw, handle 20 watts. Every, uh, sorry, 20 amps um, all day long on a continuous. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Continuous current. Uh, 570 DG, 599, and a few more um, uh, 590s as well. I want to mention this, a little um, QJE. It's very much the same as um, the, the Mydell uh, power supplies do, basically the same as a, a, an MP30. 49 pounds gets you that for a, a lightweight, small 30 amp power supply, 25 amps continuous. And um, the uh, TS590 SG 70th anniversary edition um, with that lovely piano black finish. Um, have, this is your chance to own one of the very limited edition ones of these, 14.99. Although give us a call and we will do you a deal, I am absolutely sure. Uh, a couple of more bits to bring. You've got another 450 just sat there, as well as a 480 sat as well. Uh, and also in stock, we've had to put used everywhere at the moment because of that uh, shocker block. Uh, 7300, uh, of course it needs no instruction. This particular one isn't all that old, it's only a few months old. Uh, up at £899 for something that really is, I think, because I only bought it from us in about February this year. Uh, it's, um, uh, of course, Icom's 100 watt sort of entry level SDR with the colour screen. Uh, I've got one, my colleague Richard's got one, as, as uh, John has got one as well, uh, as used by the MLS team. Um, yours for just £899. Also, uh, an FT891, 100 watt HF and 6 metre mobile with uh, separation ability as well. So you, you can buy the separation kit, the YSK891, uh, put the main body of the radio uh, in the boot or under the seat, just have the head unit up the front. 
Uh, if you want to go mobile on HF and you uh, maybe want to use an ATAS as well, of course, these will support the ATAS, and that's a fantastic option as well. There we go. I'm going to pop the um, camera. I'm going to pop the camera on that way, and I'm going to face the other way. That seems uh, like a good option. I'm going to pick up my um, my tablet here and uh, and uh, have a quick look at some of the comments. So there's uh, quite a few in there. Uh, afternoon to Barry, who's who said hello three times. Hello, Barry. Um, Let's have a look. Okay. Afternoon to uh, to Ken, uh, M1CYR. Hello to you and to Terry G7WRS. Uh, hello to you, uh, Terry. Uh, from he says hello from a wet and rainy world. I have to say that uh, the rain coming down this morning in Staines was um, insane. Um, I think to be honest with you, a car was not the right mode of transport this morning. I should have done with a boat. Um, Nigel says, any chance you could do a feature on uh, linear amps? Um, Nigel, yeah, absolutely. We'll, um, something we'll come back to. We, we have done that in the past and certainly we'll, we'll come back and do that again uh, very soon. If you are after an amplifier uh, in the meantime, like, uh, oh, we don't have one out. Um, but I've, I've, we used to have a Juma. So it's that there. Uh, but um, I can't find out at the moment. But uh, yeah, look at the, the Juma, uh, the PA1000. If you're after a, a kilowatt out, uh, it's brilliant. We'll work with pretty much everything. Uh, hello to Chris. Good afternoon from a rainy Oxford. That's Chris G1 uh, JXS. Um, let's have a look. See, um, Michael says, can you show some time on all of the different SDRs that we do, either SDR planners, etc.? Uh, yeah, of course we will do. Um, we'll, we'll add that into our little video, Paul. Um, yeah, uh, SDR play, of course, um, very popular in terms of uh, receiver only SDRs. Uh, of course, it's not the only option. There's also things like the Kiwi SDR if you want to maybe use one remotely. Kiwi SDR is a good choice. And there's also uh, the, the funky dongle as well. That's always very popular. And um, the Kerberos SDR, which I've only sort of started doing in the last uh, 12 months or so, uh, four channel uh, RTL SDR um, system. Great for direction finding. There are a lot of people who use that for DFing uh, as well. Um, and he also says, how to install and use, what antennas to use with them would be brilliant. That always comes down to, of course, Michael, what uh, frequency you want to be receiving. Um, generally speaking, there is no one-size-fits-all antenna. A disc cone comes close, uh, but uh, it will always come down to, to what particular frequency band or what uh, wavelength you want to be listening to. Uh, will dictate on what antenna to use. Uh, Afternoon to Andy, M0CFM, who says uh, Diperflex is excellent, and he uses it on his inverted L and Delta. Excellent, that's great news, Andy. Um, hello to Brian, uh, G0RDH. Hello to you, Brian, hope you're well. Uh, Ian says, when will you be getting the Diamond BB7B back in stock? We are chasing Diamond as we speak. Uh, we're chasing the European distributor uh, for Diamond or Diamond Europe uh, at the moment. So uh, we will, as soon as we have them, if you've got one on back order with us, Ian, um, then of course we will be getting you one as soon as they come in. Um, we're not, we're, we will be getting you one uh, as soon as we possibly can. Uh, Brian says, I see you passed the Kenwood 480 sat. No, I just spoke about one earlier. Must have joined in. Yeah, we, I, we have got 480 four sats in. Excellent radio, exactly as you say, for portable or base station um, or, or as, uh, as I said, mobile use as well. Afternoon to Martin, uh, M0JBV. Uh, Hello to you. Hope you're well. Um, Mike, that's a good question. What's the difference between Ultraflex 10 and Hyperflex 10 loss-wise? Hang on, stay there. Let, let me get the uh, the book. Uh, just talk amongst yourselves just for a minute while I while I grab the book. And if um, uh, if you've uh, ever stopped stop by the uh, the shop, um, uh, or if you haven't uh, and you want one of these, do ask us. We will um, we'll post one out to you if you want. Uh, is the Messi and Peloni coax book? This is a uh, uh, it is the oracle uh, on all of the different coaxes. So let's have a look. See, so it's specifically about Ultraflex 10 uh, versus Hyperflex 10. So um, I'm not sure how I'm going to quite be able to do this uh, quite well because I can't really see the camera, but uh, got all the details for the, the Hyperflex 10. And I have to say that page is available on our website as well. Um, so you can look at all of that information. Oh, well, I'm just uh, got a bit of glare on there, haven't I? There you go. So that page is on the website. If you look at Ultraflex 10 on the website, it's on there. And then we've also got the page for Hyperflex 10 as well. So for instance, uh, if we were to look at, say, uh, 430 megs, um, over 100 meters of Hyperflex 10, uh, you'd be losing 8.6 dB. Um, and for Ultraflex 10 at 430 megs, it's actually the same, 8.6 dB. Oh, there we go, look at that. Of course, the main benefit is the Hyperflex 10. And here's one that John has just delivered for me. Hyperflex 10 is much more flexible than Ultraflex. Ultraflex 10 is, it is still flexible. It's still great for, for use on rotators. But if you want something that is even more flexible, 
um, than Ultraflex 10. There we go, Ultraflex 10 as well. So Ultraflex 10, there is a certain amount of flexibility to it, but here's the difference. Um, the Ultraflex 10, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cores of quite thick copper wire. The Hyperflex 10 has, I think it's 15, it's a bit difficult to count, but 15 thinner cores, which gives you that extra flexibility. Either is gonna be great for going around a rotator, but if you're going higher up in frequency and are gonna be using a rotator, go for the Hyperflex 10. Uh, if you're putting it onto a vertical maybe, um, or you have less need for it to be constantly moving, then go for the, uh, the Ultraflex 10. So if you're not constantly moving, if you're gonna go to a vertical say, and you're not putting it around a rotator, go for the Ultraflex. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, and of course, the same connectors work for both. So if you, uh, it's the same end type and the same PL259 uh, for both connector types, uh, for both coax types, sorry. Uh, thank you for the question there, Mike. Uh, hello to Sid, uh, EI3IEB, uh, um, and uh, to Salman as well, hello to you, M0IZH, hello to you. Um, let's have a look-see. Uh, Bob here says, hi Jonathan, bought the house for the 6B TV as you suggested, I've been running very happy with it. Um, thank you, Bob, GW6RBZ. I'm very uh, glad to hear that. Of course, the, uh, the 6B TV from Hustler is our most popular selling uh, HF vertical. Of course, it is good for uh, 80, 40, 30, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Um, a lot of confusion around the, uh, the, uh, the Hustler as to whether you need radials or not with it. And, um, and here's a simple answer for you. In an ideal world, yes. Yeah, in an ideal world, if you can get radials out and a full radial kit out for the Hustler, then that is going to give you the most optimum performance. However, um, you don't necessarily need to do that if you can't do that. If, um, if you want an effective system, it will work by just putting a, an earth flake in the ground next to the base of the antenna um, and, and a shorter length of um, um, uh, earth cable as possible onto that ground stake. And that will work. That will be an effective antenna system for you but you can improve upon that with a full radial system. I really hope that clears things up. There's been a lot of confusion about that, I know. Hello to Mike, uh, G0RFD. Um, what's in concern in general? I, I hope I answered that question as well, Mike. And um, let's have a look, see. Um, HG says, that's 20 KJ about the 902, which um, we mentioned uh, in the in the U section uh, just now. Shooting horror stories about cat plates touching, bad soldier sort of signature. I take it the individual have been checked for these issues, yeah, absolutely. Of course, all of our used equipment is tested on site by uh, one of our engineers in the workshop. So yeah, absolutely, uh, fully tested. And we, 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 uh, that's, that's the reason why you might decide to buy from us rather than uh, on, uh, on eBay from anybody else, um, because we do check everything. And of course, we offer everything used with a three month piece of my warranty. So, you know, even if you do buy something from us and you get it and you get it home, and after a week it, uh, it starts developing a problem or, or there is you get it back to us and we'll, we'll fix it under warranty and um and uh, yeah maybe that's uh, that's the reason why you would buy from us and of course if you if you decided to go uh, brand new of course uh, most things come with a two-year warranty now the AZ still comes with a three-year warranty as standard right uh, final chance to get any questions and i'm going to wrap this up in just uh, a few minutes time we've been going on for about half an hour so uh, or just under so yeah any final uh, questions you want to get in there uh, uh, try to think next week on uh, um, Saturday. Tony is back in the store. He's had this last week off on holiday. Uh, well deserved holiday, I think, is the uh, uh, the phrase. So he's he's back in the the shop next Saturday. Um, so he will uh, definitely be doing uh, uh, the um, the live next Saturday. And of course, if you have any requests for us to do uh, particular videos, like uh, uh, like we've seen in the chat today uh, regarding like the SDRs and, and amplifiers as well. Uh, then, of course, you can always email us. Um, just get us on our normal sales email address, sales at hamradio.co.uk. Keep your eyes on our used pages because we've got a load more stuff going on the used website um, earlier this coming week. Um, and um, there's, I think there's also a 9700 on the website as well at the moment. There's a, there's a whole load of used items on the website. So do go hamradio.co.uk slash used. Of course, there is also our Something for the Weekend mail out that comes out on Friday at midday. Uh, so uh, if you're not subscribed for that, uh, go head to our website, hamradio.co.uk, scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a yellow banner, pop your email address in there, uh, and we will send you an email once a week uh, with some, some offerings that we might interest you, and also accompanied, of course, by a video as well. 
If you're mentioning videos, do make sure you're subscribed to us here on YouTube uh, and also click that bell notification icon in order to be uh, notified when we go live or when we update or upload a video. And uh, that way you'd be one of the first here. Right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I think there's a contest on um, this afternoon until midnight. So uh, uh, if, uh, if you're going to have a play with that, uh, and just give a few points. Away. Good luck, have fun. And uh, no doubt we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Ta-ra, bye-bye.